Greetings, hacksters. I am still in Moscow, having spent the weekend at the Rukami Festival, which is basically like a maker fair, but not. Uh, and I decided to stick around for an actual maker fair <laughs> this weekend. So uh, in the meantime, I have been to the amazing Soviet Arcade Machine Museum, or the Musée Sovietskich Igrovich Avtomatov. This place is ridiculous. They have dozens of gorgeous machines with amazing design and some actually really cool technology. Uh, I want to especially highlight their use of the Pepper's Ghost technique, which is used in some effects nowadays even, including that Tupac Shakur hologram, and also that thing of where you put a little pyramid of uh, clear plastic on your phone and you're able to play holographic videos. That's based on this same technique that they used. I think it was done partly in order to be able to superimpose things on a physical model of a landscape, but also in order to be able to fit things in the right dimensions for an arcade machine. So if you wanted to have a viewing depth that was like yay long, uh, that didn't really work with the size of machines that they had, and so instead they rotated it down 90 degrees and used a semi-transparent pane of glass to reflect it up to your viewing angle. I took way too much video, it's not super polished because I was running around a museum, but I think it's worth taking a look. My favorite game by far was Astro Pilot, a ridiculous game where you're trying to guide your spaceship around obstacles in the field. It's a really cool game and super fun, and it makes the coolest noises. There are a number of battle-themed ones, including this one, Marskoi Boy, or Sea Battle. Another one, Torpedo Attack, has a similar theme, and looks pretty much the same. <laughs> then you've got Submarine, where they're actually rotating and moving the landscape while you're playing, which gives it a bit of an extra challenge. This one is seriously hard. And Sky Battle, which you can pretty much guess what that's about. Another one where it's really hard to judge angles. Speaking of which, my aim is also terrible in the Sniper games, Sniper 1 and Sniper 2. Another really cool thing about a bunch of these machines is that they use Nixie tubes in order to keep score, or in this case, to set a timer. And curiously, the 2 and the 5 seem to be the same number, just flipped upside down. Another game used little rotating counters. And for one or two very special games, they had even rolled their own PCB to replace the guts of the machine, which I think is super cool. I've never seen a PCB with Cyrillic on it before. When you arrive at the museum, you get a little matchbox that's full of 15 Kopec coins from the Soviet Union, which you use to play the games. So here is one of those bad boys. I had to hang on to one. I couldn't help myself. It's incredibly rad. It turns out that there is one in St. Petersburg as well, so if you're in either of the most famous cities in Russia, be sure to stop by. It is worth the trip.